coming up on the show. Uh, so, yeah, so you were laying down on the bed. She was on top of you and <laughs> Craig, <laughs> you were wearing like bright colored striped <laughs> socks. <laughs> I'm like, the fuck? They were sky zone socks with the grippy bottoms on them. Oh. <laughs> so now, nah, yes, I'm, that's the grip sock gang. Me and my boy, Sir Mocha, the GSG, baby. You are now listening to the Venus Cuckoldress podcast, a place to learn all things cuckolding for the curious, the passionate, and the sexually empowered woman who wants it all. Go to venuscuckoldress.com. You'll find the new Queen's Quarters fan destination. Book a one-to-one chat with me, listen to the private podcast, and even get access to my secret Snapchat group, where I share some of my most intimate encounters. Now sit back, make yourself comfortable, and let's dive right into this episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, everyone. I'm your host, Venus. This is going to be a really great show. Thank you so much for being here today. So I have the Craig McKinney. He is my guest today. He is, let me tell you, larger than life, a beautiful black man, a content creator, and maybe, maybe even a hot wife trainer. (laughs) We'll see. Uh, And for those of you who've attended lifestyle events, I'm sure you've definitely seen him around with his Superman cape, his outrageously funny hats, and his hilarious t-shirts. He's here today to share his story about his adventures in the interracial lifestyle and to share some laughs along the way, of course. But first, I have... A couple of announcements. The first one, okay, let's just, I'm just going to get this one over with because I'm really excited for the second announcement. The first one, there is a new top tier in Venus Connections. Venus Connections is for is a matchmaking service for singles who are looking for a loving cuckolding relationship and or female-led relationship. There's a couple of different programs there. But there's a new tier, and it's called the Top 1% Tier. And that is for successful gentlemen and beautiful women who are looking for that kind of relationship. Right now, there is a special promotion going on until January 1st, where you can get 40% off that membership. That's pretty That's pretty good discount. So... <laughs> If you want to sign up and get more information, you can go to venusconnections.com. That promo code is VC2024. Okay, next. I just want to say a big Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays, whatever you celebrate, or if you don't celebrate, I don't care. Merry Christmas. (laughs) This time of year is always so special for, for me and so many people out there, but it really does make me think about all of the people who I really love and appreciate. And I just want to say a big thank you to all of the people out there who have Uh, listen to the show, who have supported the show, who have become supporters through the Queen's Quarters fan club on venuscuckoldress.com. It's because of you I've been able to do this as my job. And I I know I say that a lot. I say that often. I say, thank you. You allow me to do this. But you really, I am so grateful for you. Your support really does mean so much to me. It really does. So I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who has supported the podcast. Extra love, extra big love for my my tier called the Helpful Cucks. These supporters are so special to me and they have been just amazingly helpful for me <laughs> this past year. I mean, incredibly. Huge shout out to Grunky who has funded my new boobies. <laughs> Yay! I'm telling you, I have some seriously big queen energy going on. So thank you so much for a grunky. 
There was a few others that pitched in as well. So thank you for that. Lastly, I just want to say, uh, because this is the last episode of 2023 and January actually brings the fourth season of this show. It's been, it'll be four years since I launched this show and what a fucking amazing journey it's been. I cannot believe that this show is ranked in the top 0.5% ranking in the world. That just fucking blows my mind. <laughs> Seriously, this little show about cuckolding. <laughs> anyway, I just, it's amazing. I'm, I'm so grateful. And I just want to re- reflect on what an amazing journey this has been. And I have to say a big thank you to all of my incredible guests who I've had this year. And I just want to say a big shout out to you all. So listen up. This is a list. (laughs) And I was going through this list and I was like, damn, this is an amazing group of people, really. It kicked off with Dr. Justin Leigh Miller in January of this year, followed by Miss Ruby Ryder, who talked about pegging. And that was an amazing show. She's awesome. Love her. Followed by the Queen Harmony California. And then Key Barrett, we did the two-week chastity challenge. And heads up, that's happening again this uh, coming year in 2024. And then Slurpee Cuck was on the show. That was a very powerful episode. Excellent. And then Scott, who is the husband of the most beautiful queen, Kennedy, was on the show. Same with uh, Cuck S. And Dr. Tara was on the show as well, followed by... Oh, the very sexy Dimitri and Oliver, one of my helpful cucks, was on the show as well as Gay Cuckold Huppy. That was a great episode. Loved that one. The very sexy Pagan was on the show. (laughs) And Hot Wife Rosa, she was so awesome. Loved that one. Miss Radio Sapphire, she's so great. Love her to death. And Cuck Next Door, that was an awesome one. Plus, we launched the Cuck View talk show. And on that show, Goddess Kayla was a guest. And on the show, I had Playboy Savage, the very sexy Playboy Savage. Grunky was a guest on the show. Same with Lily Sparks and Cuckoldress Abby. And most recently, Hot Blonde QOS. And oh, yeah, I had some Pillow Talk episodes, um, some special shows with Miss Mrs. L and Mr. R, the Slut Sisters, my lovely friends, Scarlett and Angie and Doc Chocolate, of course, and Ryan, Grunky and Oliver. Some of my helpful cucks were on Pillow Talk as well. And oh, shit, I had lots of guests on the GTFO radio. Fuck <laughs> I didn't write them all down, but I'm just remembering it right now. I had tons of guests on there. Shit. I know Mo from San Diego. Oliver was on there. God, Grunky. There were so many. Anyway, I know I'm missing some of you. I'm so sorry. But I just want to say a huge fucking huge thank you to everybody who made this show such a success this year. And I have had so much fun. Okay. That's it. (laughs) Let's get started with this show today. Here is my guest, Craig McKinney. Here we go. Joining me on the show today, I have a special guest. His name, well, he goes by Craig McKinney. (laughs) Welcome to the show, Craig. Say hello to everyone. Hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all everybody doing? (laughs) Um, I'm really excited to talk to you today. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. We just met in person recently at Splash Mocha in Houston. I don't think we met before that. I would have remembered. <laughs> no, we, had, we, had, we hadn't met ever before. I honestly hadn't really ever heard of you until I think you went to Pod Bash, right? No. Nope. Or <laughs> I think that's, I think it was something around pots around the time of Pod Bash that I had first heard of Venus. Okay. Okay. So, well, I'm happy to have you on the show. Um, this is going to be a great conversation. First of all, I was thinking about how am I going to introduce you? So I went on over <laughs> to your Twitter profile, Twitter or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And It'll always um, be Twitter to me. Yeah, I know. I, I just, I can't, I can't change it. Anyway, yeah. um, it says you, I, you, in your profile, you said highly rated hot wife trainer and content creator. <laughs> So what is this right. thing, a hot wife creator? 
okay, so I didn't do that. <laughs> okay. I uh, There was a guy, you know, I'm kind of busy with my personal life and everything like that. And there was this guy, he kind of started to help me out with, with a few things. Um, so he kind of hyped up a lot of stuff. I, I mean, I kind of like it. It's a, it's a cool little intro about stuff like that. But as far as explaining all of that, I mean, I could probably come up with some elaborate story, but... <laughs> I just haven't seen that before. Hot wife trainer. Right. I'm like, okay, is this like a legit lessons and stuff or what is this? <laughs> no, not, not really legitimate lessons. I mean, I guess I am. I mean, I've been, you know, in a lifestyle for a long time and, and I know there are a lot of new couples who, who I speak with and, and they are glad that they have, have met me. And, and I wouldn't say train, so to speak, but, you know, kind of walk them away, walk them into the hot wife lifestyle and everything like that. But trainer, nah, I, I wouldn't <laughs> call myself a trainer. <laughs> so how long have you been in the lifestyle then? Um, that's kind of a kind of a tricky question because I haven't I didn't really start out in the lifestyle. I didn't find the lifestyle until years down the road, actually. But um I I I started having sexually uh non-monogamous encounters probably close to 25 years ago okay uh, between 20 25 years ago so so when was it that you kind of got introduced to this uh like hot wife cuckolding thing um so you, you kind of you said you got into like non-monogamous stuff but when was it that you got into that and how did that happen all right so that that is actually uh 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 expanded story it's a good story though so um what happened was i moved back i was living in hawaii and i moved back from hawaii uh back to home in buffalo new york and i got a job shortly thereafter working at uh, fedex and um i was working as a package handler and then they upgraded me to loading aircraft so i was working early in the morning and late at night you know times when everybody's sleeping you know so and then during the day, I had nothing to do, nobody to talk to. All my friends had either moved on or in relationships and everything like that after I had graduated high school. So I was like, I had nothing to do. I started going down to my grandmother's house. My uncle got her a computer and I started going on AOL. And I found AOL chat rooms. <laughs> so um, one day I get a call and, and my favorite chat room was white female, no, black male for white female, married white female. Okay. And I didn't really, you know, back then I didn't really get what all of that was about and everything, you know. So I was just like, hey, white ladies that like black men, that I'm all for it, you know. <laughs> so uh, one day I get this call and it was, the, the call said, hey, uh, this guy, I can't remember what his name was. He's going to be up in Rochester, which is 60 miles from where I live. Um, he was like, well, he's going to be up there and he's having a party. He wants to know if you'll go. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm up for a party, man. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'll go. So she was like, well, got to tell you what type of party it is. It's like, okay. Now I'm starting to freak out. I'm like, <laughs> what kind of party is it? Yo? So she tells me, okay, well, there's going to be girls there. You know, they're going to be filming some porn and it's, you know, a swingers party. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go? I was like, well, I guess, yeah, I guess I could go and see, you know, and uh, drove up to Rochester that night and had the fucking time of my motherfucking life. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was wild. I had sex with like eight women and and had sex all night. It was amazing, you know. Um, so after that, I had stayed in touch with the, several people from the party and was had been doing like amateur porn shoots, you know. Um, fast forward a couple years, like a year and a half. Uh, and I moved to Vegas, met a girl that moved to Vegas and kind of left all of that shit behind me. Right. So um, after the relationship dissolved, I kept hearing about this place called Red Rooster. It's like, OK, Red Rooster. So somebody told me what it was. I'm like, wow, OK. You know? And here's the part that is crazy, because you met me and you got to see Craig McKinney full blast, like this crazy wild ass dude. I would drive by Red Rooster. I drove by there for about a month, month and a half on the weekends. Like Fridays, I would take a drive by. Saturdays, I drive by, drive by, drive by. Oh man, I want to go and drive by, drive by. It took <laughs> about a month for me to go inside finally, right? 
And that's how I kind of found what, you know, more of people going to brick and mortar clubs and everything like that. Yeah. So fast forward a little bit more and um, I joined up on Facebook and uh, one of the girls who I knew from the from the room friend requested me and she tells me, did you know everybody in that group was a swinger? I was like, huh? really? No, I didn't know that. I thought we was just partying and having fun and everything. Huh? So she added me to this group called the Mocha Swingers Group. Okay. And that's kind of how I found swinging and what I know now, the hot wife, cuckolding and everything like that, that goes in, inside of that. So you have a lot of experience. And by the way, I totally understand the hesitation to take that big step of actually going into a club, like a sex right. club. I was, I was so nervous. First time I went, I went with two of my girlfriends and I was just like, oh my God, I was literally shaking. I was like, I don't know what yeah. to expect. Like, what, yeah. what am I doing here? <laughs> right. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy. I just, I could not take it. And then one day I just parked the car. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> and I went inside and it was, yeah, it was, it was a trip. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. You just have to take that step. Just go yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So, and now you are this Craig McKinney, big, like larger than <laughs> life persona. Okay. For those of you listening, when I was at Splash Mocha, I was like, who is this guy? He's like got the Superman <laughs> thing going and he's got like the crazy shirts and like the hats, the everything. So if you, if you, uh, some of you might have seen some of the pictures I posted <laughs> on my Twitter of me wearing like the red hat that says make cuckolding great again. And it's like, that's the only time I'd ever wear a red hat, but like <laughs> I got that hat from you. Um, I borrowed it. Yeah. And um, because I was like, this is wild. And you had like a bunch of amazing stuff that it was just like awesome. By the way, there's tons of people at Splash Mocha who wear the most outrageous stuff like yeah. t-shirt the best t-shirts like there how is there not like a competition yet in splash mocha for the best t-shirt because like this is the thing like you yeah. guys really Cause, up cause it I'd every win. year yeah because i went that you know i got some i got some wild shirts but there is a dude uh uh sir mocha who, who wears he wears some really good shirts too but uh, that sounds like the idea. I have to suggest that to them come up, you know, with that could be like a daytime contest because they started doing different contests like a door prize and room decorations. Maybe during the day they could have a, a best T-shirt and have, you know, small gift for that. I have to talk to them and see about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be fun because obviously, you know, somebody got the memo. You guys are all you've got. I got I saw this one guy with like. He had like um, arrows pointing the shoulders. He's like foot rests right. or something foot like that. Rest. I was like, yeah. what? And yeah. like the cuckold uh, t-shirts. Everybody knows you can, this is the one place where you can wear this shit. And I, I it, everything goes like, yeah. <laughs> so fun. Where did the big persona um, come from? The Craig McKinney, the, the all the wild stuff. It, it, it kind of, I mean, once you get to know me, like, like I I said, when, when you don't get to know me, like I'm that person that's driving by the club, you know, waiting to go in. But once you get to know me, I am this vivacious, bubbly, just full of life character, you know. And um, it's kind of like if you follow wrestling, they say the, the, the best characters in wrestling, in wrestling are the characters who can turn their persona up, you know. And that's kind of how it is with me with the lifestyle. I mean, I have my, my lifestyle and my vanilla life and the vanilla life, the people that work who know me, they know I'm, I call it and I have people cracking up all day, but the lifestyle is my chance for me to forget everything that's going on in my vanilla life, my work, family, bills, whatever the fuck is going on. And then I turn that doubt up to Craig McKinney and we go and we laugh and we joke and have fun. You know, it's a chance for me to forget everything. You know, I don't watch the news. I don't watch shit on tv i don't care about nothing the tv doesn't turn on and we just laughing and joking and having a good time you know yeah so what is the lifestyle to you because we use this word the lifestyle and it could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people what does it mean to you well again it is kind of just an escape for me man you know i have i'm just like everybody else again i have real life problems when I, I i really i enjoy what i do sometimes but i don't like my job a lot of times you know and, and there's a lot of for, for various reasons you know but um i have issues and problems just like just like everybody else and and again when 
I go to Hito, I go different places, I go to Splash. It's a chance for me just for a couple of days just to say, let my hair down, pun intended, <laughs> <laughs> and and just and just let loose and, and continue to be a child and enjoy life, you know, laugh and joke and make other people laugh and have fun. And, you know, it's just an escape from the real life BS every day, you know? Yeah, very therapeutic in a way, yeah. um, for sure, to help help have that balance it, that's what it is for me it, it helps me have balance from the craziness of right. everything else and then yeah you can just sort of like I feel like be, I can be myself and be comfortable in the lifestyle and not have to worry about like judgment or weird stuff like right. I just feel like I can just be me so and that's that's great to have a place and a, an outlet for that so right. um it's kind of like it's kind of like acting too man you know you know you put on this different I mean, again, the Craig persona is kind of, it's me enhanced, but, you know, it's kind of like acting for a lot of people. You can go and, like you said, for the most part, because we all know that there is some, for the most part, there's still no judgment about different things. And you can just be who you want to be. If you're bi, if you're a cuckold, if you like gangbangs, you know, or whatever it is, whatever your kink, you know, in the BDSM world, they say, don't yuck someone else's young. You know, so, and that's how it is with the lifestyle with me. You just go and, and just, it's a release, you know? Absolutely. And it's a safe, should be a safe space where you can right. just, you know, in, instead of, because uh, let's face it, a lot of these um, things, cuckold, swinging, non-monogamy, whatever, I mean, sissy stuff, like buy stuff, whatever. A lot of this stuff carries a lot of shame and embarrassment for most people right. and, and, at those events, at the lifestyle events, it's like you check that shit at the door. Right. <laughs> you know, <Right. laughs> you check right. it at the door, and you this is the one safe place where you can just be who you are. And not just right. that, but you can meet other like minded people as well, which is like amazing. That's a big part right. of it. The lifestyle for me is that it's a community of people, and that is an amazing resource for people for sure. It is. Um, it is. So do you said you get a lot of like new couples that approach you. So do you consider yourself a bull? Then I'm assuming yes. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't necessarily consider myself a bull. Um, I don't know. It's, 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 I'm not like bothered by it as much as, as you know, like, but I just, I don't know. I'm, I hear it and I'm just like, it's cringy. Okay, I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is about it. It's just, you know, cons comparing myself to an animal, you know, I like to consider myself a gentleman. And I mean, because if you know me, I, I can be very gentleman like and, and, and friendly as long as, as well as laughing and joking and having a good time, you know. But I mean, I guess the standard definition of what a good bull is, I guess, you know, I am, but I really don't consider myself that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I've been finding that word bull a little cringy lately, and I don't know yeah. why. Like, I just, because I've used it so many times, and like, it's it's part of the cuckolding lifestyle is like that term bull. But yeah, it just, I don't know. It doesn't suit like my guy friends, you know, like who do right. who do that role sometimes in the lifestyle. So I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody said think, bull, think... a bull friend, but even that is kind of, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I mean, I think I think kind of it too is when you think of a bull, you don't think of somebody that's 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 you know well mannered and and easygoing with stuff. You think about this animal that's that's just a big huge animal that when they see red, it tears shit up and and you know I don't know it could be that simile as well. But I'd like to think myself of something more than just a, a bull, you know, because I, I like that. I, I, once I find a playmate, there's there's people that I continue to play with. There's mm -hmm. other people that I don't, but, you know, it's not. As, and it, I, I think of a bull as an aggressive type of animal, and that's not me in any way. Uh, I guess when people call me a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I'm like, yeah, whatever. But if people were calling me, constantly calling me, referring to me as a, a cougar, yeah, I'd be like, what? Am I just a kitty? Like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> right. it is kind of weird that within like the sex lifestyle, if you think about it, a lot of these um, names come from animals like a snow bunny and whatever, like right. I don't know what it is about animals that we just, we need to label ourselves as something 
I don't know. It's weird. I don't, I don't know. It is. It is. <laughs> um, off topic. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So um, what about the whole interracial aspect of it? I know you said way back when you what you were you liked being in the chat room that was about like white women who like black guys. And you're like, yeah, sure. Sign me up. Um, but is is what about that term BBC? Do you how do you feel about that? That that one, I'm not as offended by that one. Um I guess because I know that that not everybody is a BBC. Yeah. You know, I know some guys and I've seen, I'm like, oh. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> BBC, no, but you know, <laughs> I mean, especially because I think I've seen the words BWC, BSP, uh, BSC is used as well. It's not just exclusive to BBC. What is so, BSC? Um, Big Spanish. Oh, I've not heard of that. <laughs> yeah I've seen that once I haven't you know like it's not like widely used but I've seen that term as well okay interesting so okay um yeah because like I, I think some guys really I you know really click with that whole BBC thing they're like yeah for sure like that's awesome I'm down and then the, some other guys are just like nah so much especially depends on how you use the word like referring to somebody as a bbc is like yeah. weird as fuck <laughs> yeah i try not to get all into all of that stuff man you know I, again that goes back to just just living in the moment and, and and having fun rather than you know all the descriptive terminology and everything like that you know it's it, it's it's a word that that you know, some people use to describe something. So, okay, you want to use it? Okay, call me a BBC. I'm, I'm indifferent to it. Yeah. <laughs> it is okay. what it is. And, you know, just keep moving. But the events that you, the lifestyle events that you go to, okay, so you and I met at an interracial event, Splash Mocha. Are right. the, are, do you go to other events that are not interracial? Um, Most of my events are interracial. Um. I do go to places like Hito that, you know, you don't really see a lot of uh, black gentlemen there. Um, on special occasions, you see more Jamaican guys come in. I'm trying to uh, get a few more people of color there. But yeah, most of my stuff is is really, I guess, centered around the interracial lifestyle. Why is there not an uh, interracial Hito event? <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> I'm trying, well, I'm trying to get a little more a week where there are more people who are uh black gentlemen that, that are going yeah I mean, bbc as they say um i have a week in april coming up where i'm trying to get a lot of people to come but the problem is hito and i didn't know this until i started trying to put it together has a single guy quota um, so they right because it's for swingers to go. right yeah, well no hito is not entirely for swingers hito is a it's, it's just a lifestyle place. And there's a lot of people that go there that are just nudists. You know, there's right. a lot of people that go there that just hang out. You know, they do go to the new pool. They party. Um, I remember one kind of memorable experience I had with these people. They were just exhibitionists. And, you know, they don't swing. Right. But there's a lot of people that go there. But there are certain weeks you go and, and there's a lot of swinging and swapping and going on. But it's not always like that. It's just a, it's just a good lifestyle resort where you can do let your hair down and, and, and have fun, you know? Right. Well, they really need to get on the interracial bandwagon because yeah. <laughs> it's in demand. Like I have, it I is. put it out there and I asked, I asked people on my Twitter, I was like, so if you could have access to more in-person events, would you go? And they were, there was like a absolute wave of people that were like, yes, like I would go if yeah. I had the opportunity, I would go. And I think Splash Mocha is a good example of that. They sell out every event. They yep. sell out in advance. This is something that, you know, that people really want. So hello, or what about, okay, get this. This is my idea. <laughs> or maybe somebody else has already thought about it. I don't know. Um, so charter a fucking cruise ship <laughs> and have it interracial. <laughs> Oh my God, that would be so fun. And so you could go from like Florida to Jamaica and back or something like that, like a five day cruise or something. Like I, that'd be amazing. 
Just saying. There is a guy, the guy that runs Cap, that was his dream was to have a, a interracial crews like that, you know, but that takes a lot of, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a big expense and everything like that. But that was one of the things he wanted and he still wants to try and do is have a, a cruise to go out like that. That'd be amazing. I did a, um, yeah. a cruise that was a reggae cruise that was where like the Marley brothers or whatever got together and like chartered this cruise ship. And so I, I'm like, I know you can do it. Like <laughs> it would yeah. be, it would be so fun. Anyway, there's a lot of possibilities and I think there's a lot of demand for it. What other events do you go to? You said something in Europe. Yeah, the guy I just mentioned, he holds an event in uh, in Cap Dag, France. It's on the Mediterranean. He has it once a year, the last weekend of August. It's called uh, Black to Cap. Um, he also has one called Black to Italy, where you know he takes people, single gentlemen, over to Italy and over to France, and then people come and party with with them. Black to Cap is like it, it, it's an amazing experience. So that is, it's absolutely amazing. We have. Uh, one club that we go to where they have a phone party, they do not allow single gentlemen until Black to Cap. <laughs> and it, it and it is it is fun. It is fun. The women, they all come around us and it, it's it's a great time. Um and then as I mentioned, Hito. I love going to Hito. I'm going to Hito Friday, in fact. So Damn. Uh, and Hito's those are the in, three in Jamaica. Ones. Always in Jamaica, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's in Jamaica, yeah. Okay. Well, that's amazing. You get to just, oh, I'm going to Jamaica on Friday. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to ask you how, like you said, you have a day job and this is the lifestyle is kind of like on the side. Right. But do you plan to ever have the lifestyle as your day job? No, okay. no, I make, I make good money with what I do. Um, I'm in a good situation where, um, I can take off almost as much time as I want. I get five weeks of vacation. Um, in a couple months, couple years, I end up getting six weeks of vacation. You know, and again, I get thirty days off a quarter where I can just have somebody work my shift and then leave. You know, so that's how I get so much time off. So, okay, it it'd be nice to to do that, but you know why? Again, I like the separation between the lifestyle and my vanilla. Yeah, and you know. It keeps me busy. So you have an OnlyFans, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but you are in the lifestyle. You have an OnlyFans. You've been doing this for so many years um, in the lifestyle. I'm assuming that the number of women you have slept with is astronomical. <laughs> right? Am I right? <laughs> uh, I... I, I... I wouldn't say astronomical, but it's but it's quite a few, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> uh yeah, I would think so. Um yeah. so what's that like for you? I mean, I, I and the reason why I'm asking is these are casual kind of encounters, sort of, right? I mean, you have regular people who you sleep with and stuff like that, but um what about like your love life? Like, is this do you, do, are you, are you single? Are you in a relationship? Are you looking to find one? Single, not looking. If something stumbles in my lap, then, you know, that's different. I like, uh, I like as, as, as friendly and as wide open as I am about everything, I kind of like my private time too. I can sit in, in a room by myself and, and not do anything for a while. I spend a lot of my time by myself. Maybe that's yeah. why I'm so crazy once I get out. <laughs> it's all pent up energy. No, I'm not really looking for anything, you know. I do have people again that I text almost every day. We have a great relationship with, but they're most of them are all married. And yeah, you know, I kinda again, I kinda like, hey, let's have fun. Let's do this. Let's oh, you wanna come visit me? We had to do this, and that. Okay, now you're going home to your husband. Good. Great. <laughs> you know, not really looking for anything. No. Yeah. Yeah, because I wonder about that sometimes, and I know I've talked about it on the show and on my blog and stuff like that before is, you know, does it get lonely sometimes as a bull? Because yes, you have all of this, you know, physical intimacy and everything like that. But when it comes to the emotional intimacy in a relationship, you're probably missing out on that part. But it just depends yeah. if you feel like you're missing out or not. So I know that's a touchy subject. And I was like, oh, well, ask Craig and see what that's all about yeah. for him. <laughs> no, 
I I do. I mean, I mean, I can't lie about it. I I, I do. Um, once you get to once you get past that, you know, that Shrek onion, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, you do. Like for instance, I was talking to a friend of mine in Florida, and she was like, "I love talking to you." I was like, "We we've never had sex or anything. We just she out of the blue one day she messaged me, and we became you know friends and everything." Um, she was like, "I love talking to you." I was like. You're such a softy. I was like, hey, don't be telling nobody that shit. Don't fucking tell people that. <laughs> she, she, you know, but yeah, there are times where I sit and I'm like, you know, I do miss that intimacy part of it. You know, um, I am a, a, a hopeless romantic, I guess, in many ways. And and yes, there are times where I like to cuddle. You know, I, I'll yeah. admit that I like to cuddle and lay down and and, and grab a titty as I'm sleeping and, and <laughs> all types of stuff like this. So when I get a, somebody that spends the night, it's great to have. But yeah, I do miss that every yeah. now and then. But, but I'm happy not to have it. You yeah. know? Um, I was watching a video on your... Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> on your Twitter. Oh my. And I, 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 not gonna lie, I cracked up. Like I was just like, that is so Craig. Um, it was you and Bella oh, Bear. No. <laughs> I know what, what it was now already. <laughs> Bella Bear, <laughs> yeah. And she's a sweetheart. I love her, by the way. Yeah, and I love her. She is. She's great. Uh, so yeah. So you were laying down on the bed. And she was on top of you, and <laughs> Craig, <laughs> you were wearing like bright colored striped <laughs> socks <laughs> i'm like the fuck okay i hate it when guys wear socks in bed so but you're you just went for it you're like the the really like the long up the halfway up the leg socks that are like striped no, oh no 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 okay all right so so do, okay so first of all they weren't regular socks okay first of all they weren't regular socks they were sky zone socks with the grippy bottoms on them oh okay? <laughs> so no yes I, that's grip sock gang me and my boy sir sir mocha the grips gsg baby gsg we all we got the, grip the grippy sock socks gang. no yes, yes. <laughs> and trust me, i do not like my socks halfway up my calves i'm a low cut i want my my anklets on so but bella just got me she had me out of character, you know. So I, I guess it was pulled up a little bit. <laughs> and then the shirt you had on, I know it had something outrageous said on it, but I couldn't read it. Um, but you did have the red hat that make cuckold and great yeah. hat on. Um, yeah. But I was like, that is so Craig. Like, <laughs> do, every time that you make content, are you dressed like that? Like, do you always have something wild and crazy? I mean, it's again, it's my persona, you know, just to to laugh and joke and have fun. You know, it's 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 not something that's planned out. You know, I just I just, the hat I wear oh, compliments to to Danny Black. Got a shout out for him for the hats. So always uh, if you want to hit blackhat.com or hit me up, I, I can get you in touch with him. He makes all sorts of hats. Um, he's getting me a custom joint right now with the CM Craig McKinney Superman logo on it um but he does all my stuff um it's not it's just it's just like my persona now you know where it's just wild and crazy stuff and the hats like somebody said oh when you had the hat there was a girl that was like I know whose hat that is yeah you know it's just <laughs> it's just like my calling card now you know it just kind of stuck with me it's so awesome okay I need to get it uh get a hold of that hat guy and get a Venus hat that would be great I got you I got you I'll give you I'll send you his number yeah, I'll let him know and I'll send you his number. For those of you listening right now, I will put the link to his information in the show notes for today if you want to get yourself a wild and crazy hat. Um, okay, and so there also uh, at Hedo, or no, not Hedo, at Splash Mocha, I saw you walking around with a, like a flogger. So yeah. this, <laughs> you're like the flogger guy. Tell us about that. <laughs> um, so remember I was the start the story where I was telling you where I started and I met the mocha swingers group so the girl that got me introduced to them she had a flogger it was the first flogger that I had ever seen and she, it was a flogger it had the falls on it but it was in the shape of the handle wasn't a handle it was a brass knuckles so I saw her flogging people and I was like oh that's pretty cool that you know so I picked them up and I started using them 
and I got pretty good at them. And soon um, I bought my first flogger. I still have today. I like using it still. <laughs> um, and it kind of just grew and grew and grew. Uh, thankfully, flogging, it kind of, the movements and everything kind of came kind of easy to me. But it's funny, flogger guy, um, I didn't know I was flogger guy. Uh, a couple of my friends was like, man, Craig, I was at this party and some girls came up to me and they was like, do you know flogger guy? I was like, flogger guy? <laughs> and, oh yeah, that's my man Craig. So I mean, somewhere people are just like flogger guys. So I go places and I have a flogger around me. And uh, I'm gonna tell you, I, I think that has gotten me more women than the hat has, but the flogging <laughs> has gotten yes. me a lot of women. And there's a lot of women that are really into it. So um, it's just, again, it's something that I picked up and, and I had no idea the impact that it would have later on in my life just by grabbing that first blogger. But um, yeah, I, I have people, I go places and people are requesting me to flog them now. I believe it because if you're good at it, you, you're skilled, you've learned how to do it properly. That's the key. Then you can give someone a really amazing experience. I was at a few house parties way back in my like swinger days. And um, one of the guys there was a very good at flogging. That was his thing, like really good. And so that was my first experience with flogging, like was somebody who knew exactly what he was doing. And right. I had that a few times. Uh, and it is like, an, it's a weird out of body experience kind of thing <laughs> like fun ch mentally challenging fun kind of thing and i probably yeah. would never have tried it if it wasn't for the fact that he completely knew what he was doing so right good for you i think that's awesome right. so you were doing that in the bdsm room at splash mocha i'm assuming i have but i didn't this time um normally i i take it depends because a lot of times it, it ends up having sex and, and, and I, and not to say that I do this for that reason, but there's a lot of people that when I do it, they get so turned on. Um, that's the crazy thing is a lot of people, they're like, no, I don't want to do it because I think it's going to hurt. And you know, you only hurt those people who want to be hurt and, and I can fuck somebody up, but, um, I can make it very sensual and massage like, and I've had people say, wow, this is just like a massage. And um, so I've got, I've got pieces that range from lambskin all the way up to bison that are, that are really sting. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's not, I, so, I mean, if someone said to me, I want you to flog me in, in the BDSM room, okay, I, well, you gotta go get all the floggers. <laughs> Those things ain't, ain't, ain't like, you know, so, but I have done it. Um, but a lot of times it ends up in something different. So I'd rather do it in my room in private. Plus, I don't like to see like it depends upon a person's um, their uh, sensitivity levels, too, because some people I can really lay into. Yeah. And I don't like to do that in front of people because it might ruin their experience because some people know that it's about hurting someone. So if they see me laying into somebody, then. You know, now it, their their fears are validated. And they may not try to cry. You know, right? Did you did you try the glory hole at the at Splash Mocha? <laughs> yeah, I did try the glory hole, and um, <laughs> it was because, and that was a good segue. <laughs> that was <laughs> funny. <laughs> so, um, so for people who don't know, what happened was I was standing in the reverse glory hole room. And Venus was talking to two other women. And I came walking up and they were like, go behind the glory hole. I was like, well, shit, okay. <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you no. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, wow, three women giving me a blowjob. And Venus, wow, this is pretty cool. Well, little did I know it wasn't Venus. It was just the other two girls. Venus had laid back. <laughs> I was like, okay. But it was all right because I got I got got some head from the uh, in the glory hole room from two girls and then I left, and another girl told me go behind the glory hole. So I ran back behind the glory hole. So, yeah, yeah, I like, did try it out. I sucked some dicks in the glory hole, but like I don't know who it was. <laughs> so. It wasn't mine. It wasn't mine. And then oh, remember because remember I said something to you. I was like, damn, what about you? It's giving me a blowjob. You were like when and i told you you're like that was you <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> oh, I, yes, I remember now. Oh, yeah, it's, a, like, it's a bit of a blur. That. You're like, oh, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. Oh, good times at the glory hole. <laughs> yes, good times at the glory hole. Um, okay, so let's talk about your OnlyFans. When did you decide that you were going to start an OnlyFans? And how has that been for you? Has it been a lucrative, fun experience for you? Do you enjoy it? I didn't decide. Okay. <laughs> so what happened was um, years and years and years ago, I met this guy, the Danny Black, the hat guy. He was doing mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, whenever he had something he couldn't make like he would make plans out in vegas he'd be like hey man call me up hey i got this girl coming out and i can't make it can you uh shoot go and shoot with her like yeah man i got you go get tested and and shoot with her and then um he had like three or four scenes of the shared content of mine so last year in december he he had put up a couple of them on his page and so he tagged me and did all this other stuff. And he was like, I put these videos up for you. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> so since you got them up, I might as well. My son had just, he turned 18 last January. Um, so I was like, okay, well, you put them up. I guess, you know, I'll start doing more content. I mean, what, what harm could it make, you know? <laughs> so um, it's not really lucrative. You know, if you the first time people, it's, it's kind of hard. I get flaked on a lot and put left on unread. <laughs> oh. But uh, I got a, thankfully, I got a pretty good name uh, in, in everything. And, you know, word carries and people will hit me up and say, hey, I really like your content or I heard you were really good. Um, I got a few people that, that pimp me out to some people. They're like, hey, you going to Vegas? You have to meet Craig. You have to meet Craig. So, um, but yeah, it's not really, it's not really lucrative. It's just something, you know, having fun with. And and if the money comes great, again, I got a, I got a pretty solid vanilla job, so I'm not dependent upon that money. So, mm-hmm. you know, takes up a little bit of time and some fun. Well, it definitely looks fun. Uh, according to your videos that I watch. <laughs> 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 Definitely looks like a real good time. So I want to ask you some fun questions. So uh, before we wrap this up, so uh, you've slept with a lot of women. You have a lot of experience in bed. Um, There's probably a lot of cucks out there that are just like, oh my God, I wish I could sleep with that many women. Um, But (laughs) But so you have a lot of experience. You've done a lot of things in the bedroom. You, you know, you've all of that. Do you have like a signature move? And if you don't, why not? (laughs) A signature move. At this point, I would say doggy style with one leg up. Oh, damn. (laughs) Cause, cause I don't know. It seems to like when I do that with the women, they like, they start really howling and and getting into it. But uh, I, I, I didn't, think of it until now every time I'm I'm having sex to somebody I'm like oh I gotta do this and and it seems like but plus it's a good camera angle too right you know right right but uh so if I had a signature move I would say that would be it yeah to have a signature move is very on brand for Craig McKinney just saying <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a yeah I have, I have to try that, that yeah that'll, that'll definitely that'll be my signature move just for, yeah. I'll be thinking of Venus every time I'm doing it uh, <laughs> and okay so i i mentioned that you probably have tried everything but i want to ask you anyway is there something on your bucket list of sexy stuff that you haven't done yet oh man i have to kind of think about that one and and you know what's crazy is after we get off i'll be like damn i should have said that (laughs) No, I can't. I can't think of. I mean, I've done some Venus. I've done some some wild stuff, man. I've I've done some <laughs> some <laughs> really wild stuff. Um, <laughs> but that I want to do, I can't. I can't say that I have. No, okay. that, that, I can't. Nothing comes to mind right now. No. What about if it if you could film content with anybody, anybody? Who is the person that you would absolutely want to film with? <clears throat> the first person came to mind was Sarah J. Sarah J. Jane? Sarah J. J. 
Okay. Sarah I don't know who Jay that is. is like, <laughs> oh, Lord, Sarah J is the old, she's like a, she's like the, the porn goddess now. I mean, she's, she's been in the game for a while now, but I've met her a couple of times and actually I know one of her good friends. Um, so I've met her a couple of times and every time I meet her, she's like just a, a, a great, great person, really sweet, really, really, really nice girl. But, um, that's the first person that pops into my mind. So I'm a, I'll go with Sarah J. Venus. Okay. <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you sharing your story and all of these funny, th funny things. That's very Craig McKinney with me and with the audience. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, before we wrap this up, though, I do want you to tell the listeners where they can find you or information about you, where to find your content. Um, so my Twitter, like I said, it'll always be Twitter to me, <laughs> is uh, Mr. East Coast. Miss, M-I-S-S-D-A, East Coast. That is my Twitter. That is my mini vids. My um, OnlyFans is uh, uh, Craig McKinney. On most of the sites, I'm on SDC, the Splash, Mocha site. A um, few other ones. It is always mostly, predominantly Mr. East Coast. Okay. Okay. Good to know. And for all the listeners, I will post those links in the show notes for today. So you can check out his rainbow socks in his videos on his only fans. <laughs> That's cold <-blooded. laughs> That's cold. You know, you know, and, and you know, when you talk, when you said you were going to bring up the video, I thought you were going to bring up the Superman dancing in the car with his Friday video. That one. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> forgot. I, I forgot. Oh my God. Okay. I don't know. Somebody posted something on Twitter about this video. And I think it was Doc Chocolate. And he was like, ha 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 ha. Like, like extended ha ha ha. And I was like, okay, whatever this is, it must be really fucking funny. So I opened the video and I nearly died. I nearly <laughs> fucking died oh my god i didn't know you have such hilarious dance moves okay when you started grinding against like the um the car door i was i i almost died i literally fucking almost died like get the aed i'm fucking dead okay it was so funny anyway for for those of you listening you have to check out that video and i'm so gonna put the link in the show notes for this because you, it is hilarious so, so you got, thank you. you gotta wait till friday to watch it though <laughs> friday okay oh, oh, okay 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 but anyway thank you so much for jumping in on the show with me today you've been such a fun guest so thank you so much for coming on craig you're very welcome very welcome thanks for having me i really appreciate it that's going to be it for this episode thank you so much for joining me make sure you go to venuscuckoldress.com that's where you can book a private chat with me and you can join the Queen's Quarters fan club, including the helpful cup tier. And if you're interested in joining Venus Connections to find a relationship in 2024, make sure you go to venusconnections.com. That's where you can learn more and enter the promo code VC2024 for 40% off the top 1% tier membership. That's going to be it for today's episode. Make sure you have an awesome Merry Christmas and incredible New Year's. And I will see you in 2024.